Hello there, and welcome back to the Web Data Grid series. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the client side object model to select and manipulate rows. Now, what do you say we start things off with a demo? So here's our, our grid uh, that we've got loaded up with some data on it. Basically, what's going to happen is as you come to this grid, if you want to select some of these items. So if I select one and hold down the control key, I can select um, you know, a number of different items. Uh, then using an Ajax call, I can submit those items back to the server. And what it did was made an Ajax call back to the server, and we did something with this data. So we're passing the primary keys uh, of these books, and uh, we're just stubbing it out for right now. But basically, we're assuming that you can, you can do something interesting on the server with it. Um, also, what we might want to do is clear the items that we have, or maybe we want to select all and clear them. And so what I'm going to do in this demo is show you how to implement the JavaScript and a little bit of the backend stuff in order to make all this happen. So starting off, what we have here is a standard ASP.NET website. I have NetAdvantage 2008 Volume 3 uh, installed here. That's what we're working with. And basically what we've got set up on the page so far is just a script manager and a web data grid. So the first thing I want to do with the script manager is tell it that we want to enable page methods. And the reason we're going to do this is because we will use the page methods type of functionality in order to make our Ajax call back to the server. Now for our web data grid here, let's switch over to design view and come into the smart tag here and let's edit the behaviors. So the first thing that I want to do is go into the row selectors. We'll turn that on. And we want to turn on row numbering. Not really necessary at this point, but since we're turning on row selectors, I figured let's have the, the numbering on. The next thing we'll do is come down to selection. We're going to turn it on. And for the cell click action, let's change that to say row. For the cell select type, we don't want to, we don't want to select individual cells, so we're going to say none. And down here on row select type, what we'd like to do is say multiple. And that gives us the opportunity to select more than one row at a time. Apply and OK. OK, and to get some data in the grid, let's just, um, we'll just keep it simple and come back here to the page load. I have a class that generates basically some test um, objects. So it's just going to be a list of objects. But we'll say, let's web data grid data source equals book repository. And we're just going to get, this will get like 10 books. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and run this and see what we've got. So we've got our, our grid. We can now select the rows. We can even select multiple rows. Um, pretty, pretty good functionality um, without really having to write any code yet. So we'll close that and then start begin implementing our JavaScript. So switch over to the source view here. And I'm going to open up a script block. And well, before we get too far in there, let's also go down here and, and put in our buttons. And this way we'll kind of have a sort of a mental anchor of, of what we're working towards. So, so to speed things up just a little bit, what I'll do is paste in the code for the buttons. And so what we've got here is just regular HTML buttons. And we have one called submit. And it's going to be calling a select books uh, function, the clear will be clear selections and select all. Well, it's going to call select all. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a couple variables and, and these help keep things clean as well as uh, just hold some state for us. So let's start off with the ID index. And basically this is the column index in the grid where we'll find the ID information. Um, instead of having a magic number running around of just having zero passed when we use it, uh, I like to label it just so we know what's going on when we look at this later. So the next thing that we're going to do here is create an array for our selected IDs. And so we'll initialize that as a new array. So when we send our selected IDs back to the server, it's going to uh, be passed in through this array. So we're going to be talking to the grid a couple times. So let's wrap up our, our code to access the grid to make it a little bit easier. So let's create a function. We'll call this get grid. And from here, we'll use the MS Ajax uh, find function to find the grid on the page. 
And what we'll also want to do is make sure that we're going after the correct client ID. So um, we'll use the standard notation to get the client ID. WebDG and client ID. And if we spell it right, that always helps. So when we call get grid, we're going to get a JavaScript instance of our grid. So that's all good. So the next thing we want to do is get the selected rows. So as you click on the rows on the screen, um, the, the grid will know which ones are selected. We want to be able to, to get that. So let's create a new function. We'll call this get selected rows. And so uh, first we need to talk to the grid. And that's easy enough. We'll just call our new function. Then we want to look at the behaviors on the grid. So that'll be grid.getBehaviors. Now once we have the behaviors, we can take a look at the selection behavior that we've enabled. Now if you remember, through the smart tag, we went through and checked that box that enabled the selection, and that's exactly what we're doing. So what you see in that box is, is generally mirrored by the client-side object model. So we'll just call get selection. Now from there, uh, once we have access to the selection uh, behavior, we can simply call get selected rows. So we'll do return selection dot get selected rows. So now we're ready to implement the function that's called from the submit button. And so let's call this one select books. because that's what matches uh, what we've got right here. Before we get too far into that, let's switch over to the code behind and let's implement the method that will be called um, when we make our JavaScript call. So the first thing we want to do is bring in the system.webservices namespace. And the reason for this is, is because there's an attribute that we want to use, the web method attribute. And what this does is, is marks the, the method that we'll create here. Um, as a method that needs to have a proxy made for it. So when ASP.NET AJAX serves up this page and you try to access it with a JavaScript call, it'll know that it, means it needs to, to create a wrapper or a proxy for this method so that you can uh, work with it. So as always, it's a public static, and in this case it would be void method. And we're going to call this select books. And passing in as an argument is an array of integers and those will be the IDs and from here you know it's really up to you what you do I'm gonna do a system diagnostics debug right line and you know this is where you would call uh, a presenter or perhaps a service layer or, or something depending on how you have your application architected you would call some some resource or something in order to do something with these IDs for so for right now uh, we're just gonna say do something which uh, should be good enough for now. But that way we can put a breakpoint in here and then when we run it, we'll make sure that we're making the callback. So now that we have that set up and we've got the web method, the proxy will be created for it, we can use page methods. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.